Welcome to the Superfast Touch Designer tutorial series. Today we are going to learn one of the most requested compositions, the Crystal Ribs. I have a big surprise. The first 200 people can download this project for free. Just go to my Patreon and sign up as a free member. This offer is valid until we reach the quota. In this tutorial, we will be using Ray TK. So before starting, make sure to check out this mini guide on how to use it. First, go to the GitHub site. I'll leave the link in the description. Scroll down to the Assets section and find the first file on the download list. Download it to your computer, then open Touch Designer and drag the .tox file into the network. Wait a few seconds for it to compile. For now, the most important thing is to remember that to call up the menu containing the Ray TK operators, you need to use the shortcut Alt-R. Open the menu, click on this icon to prevent the menu from disappearing, and arrange it where it's most convenient for you. Before we continue, if you're completely new to Touch Designer, you only need to know one thing for this video, how to call operators from the menu. Press the tab key to open the pop-up window with different types of operators marked with colors. Select the top operator section, type the name of the operator you're looking for, and it will highlight for easy selection. Click the operator's name and drag it into the network. If you want to call another type of operator, like an LFO, repeat the previous steps, but this time select the CHOP tab to call an LFO. If you want to learn more about operators, you can check out the video linked in the description. Normally, I don't show the pop-up window in my tutorials. Remember, follow the steps carefully, and then you'll have plenty of time to explore the results. Okay, let's begin. Chapter 1. RayTK Network We'll start by creating a cone SDF and dropping the operator into the network. Next, create a wave field. followed by a float to vector, and connect them as follows. Create a translate, and connect the last operators to the first and second inputs of the translate. Add a rotate. We'll then create a modulo 1D. This operator efficiently generates an endless series of input copies, eliminating the need for separate calculations for each instance. Next, create a reflect operator. This works similarly to the mirror top in Touch Designer. Move below and start another network by creating a cylinder SDF. Copy the wave field and float to vector and place them below the cylinder SDF. Create another translate and connect it accordingly. Move the translate below the reflect to organize our network better. Now, create an arranged and place another translate next to it. You can again copy the wave field and float to vector and connect to the second input of the translate. Add another rotate, followed by a modular material. We need to create a diffuse contributor, which will be connected from the second output to the modular material. Then, create a specular contributor and connect it to the third input of the modular material. Finish by creating an iridescent contributor and connect it to the last available input of the modular material. Finally, create a Raymarch Render 3D. Since we are in a 3D environment, we'll need at least a camera and a light source. So, create a look at camera, followed by a point light. Okay, we finished the Ray TK network. To visualize everything, let's create a null top followed by an out. If you got lost at any point in the previous steps, I'm going to make a slow horizontal scroll of the original network to ensure you have everything set up correctly. Chapter 2, Ray TK Parameters. 
I will use the same resolution from the project container in the Raymarch Render 3D. Now let's parameterize all the components. Select the cone SDF and copy these parameters. Select the wave field and use these values. Leave the float to vector as it is. Select the translate and use these values. Do the same with the rotate operator. Great, now let's parameterize the module 1D, so copy these parameters. And finally, go to the reflect operator and use these values. Let's move on to the second network. Select the cylinder SDF and use these parameters. Do the same with the wave field. Just copy these values. Go to the translate and make this little change. In the arrange, in the combine option, select smooth union and also change the radius to this value. For the third wave field, I will use these values. We are getting closer to the results. Go to the last translate and use this value. Leave the rotate as it is. We will come back to this operator later. Change these values in the diffusion and specular operators. You can leave the default values for the iridescence contributor. Perfect. Select the look at camera and change the FOV angle to 100. Set the intensity of the point light like this. Perfect. Everything is working right now. Go back to the wave field one and change the axis to Y. Do the same with the second wave field. We have almost everything ready in this network. Now we just need to create some animations to add movement to the composition. Select the wave field and press the shortcut Alt-Shift-R to call the custom menu for Raytac operators. Now select Animate with Speed and choose Phase. Set the speed values because we want the movement to feel more pronounced. Go to the second wave field and do exactly the same as we did with the first one. Next, go to the last wave field and apply the same settings as before. Lastly, we will rotate the composition continuously along the Y axis to give an effect of it constantly ascending. Select the Rotate Y option.
we will set the speed to five. I'm not entirely sure if changing everything to five is necessary, but I did it quickly without thinking too much. Now, I have a significant drop in frame rate on my computer because I forgot an important detail in the arrange operator. Let's select it and click on the optimize option. This will allow us to run at 60 frames per second without any issues again. Chapter three, TD network. First, let's move the out operator aside to create space for the network in the middle. We'll start by introducing this custom component I created called pseudo liquids. Don't worry about not being able to follow along with the tutorial. This component has its own tutorial where you'll learn how to create it from scratch. However, if you're in a hurry, you can also find it ready to use on my Patreon. The video link is in the description. Perfect. Drag the pseudo liquids component into the network and connect a null to the input of this new component. Now we're going to create a fairly common combination. Create a composite, followed by a level, and add a transform. Create another transform below the first composite and immediately connect an edge. Create some space here and connect the pseudo liquids to the first composite and invert the operators. Now create a composite and connect the last two operators to it. Now add a displace followed by a third composite. From the output of the displace, let's create a blur and then add a level. Connect this last level to the composite above it. Perfect, let's add a fourth composite to which we'll connect a ramp because we're going to use a gradient background that has a better effect in this composition. Now don't forget to select the new operators and in the common tab, select the parent panel size option. Chapter four, TD parameters. This is the final part and the most exciting one. I think you'll be amazed at how we achieve a crystal effect using image post-processing. If you want, select all the operators and resize them to make everything look more organized. Go to the pseudo liquids component and use the following parameters. Leave the colors as they are, then go to the noise section and copy these parameters. As always, we'll animate the translate using the script abs time.seconds divided by 10. We can leave noise 2 at 0 since we are not using it. Select the edge operator and use these parameters. Do the same for the blur and displace operators. Finally, turn off the mirror, go to the composite and use the blending option, multiply. Select the level operator and copy these values. For the two transforms in this network, we'll animate the Y axis. Select both operators and use the script abs time.seconds divided by five Now, in the tile options, use the mirror setting. If you want to preview any other operator, just click on the blue circle. You'll start to see this crystal-like texture forming. In the next composite, use the add blend mode. Now, copy the following parameters into the displaced top. Select the blur and level operators and use these values. We are just one step away from finishing. Use the average blend mode in this composite and use over as a blending mode for the last composite. Perfect, there's just one more detail. Let's add a background with some gradient to give a more interesting sense of depth. This part is really up to your preference, so feel free to choose any colors you like. What's important is to select the circle type for the gradient and change these parameters in the operator. The color choices are up to you, but if you want, you can copy the ones I'm using.
If you want to delve into what's happening in this network, I recommend starting with the wave field. Adjusting a few values there can give you different interpretations of the ribs we've designed. Let's see some examples here. Additionally, you can go to the cone SDF and change the height or thickness to get some really intriguing results. Now, imagine incorporating audio reactivity into this. It's a fantastic opportunity to explore dynamic audio responsive effects. Let me know in the comments. If you're interested in a tutorial on creating crystal ribs with audio reactivity, I believe this has been one of the most exciting tutorials to share so far. I hope you find it incredibly useful. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon.